Hello everybody. I have a Universal Yums box. This is the first time we've opened this one. And I have a small package from Timu. I think it's only like three items. So I figured I'll throw it in with this one. Um, so I guess we got something to do today. Uh, I don't know where the Neko is. Probably still asleep. I just got home from work, so not quite ready to lay down and go to bed yet. I did my patriotic duty and voted in the primary this morning. So, at least that happened. Usually I work the primary, but I didn't find out it was in March until the uh, work schedule was already done and I couldn't get the time off. But that's okay. Okay, yeah, it's only three items in the Simu haul. First, I have a set of stamps. Um, butterflies. It's got some numbers. Uh, let me see if I can read what these say. There is beauty and simplicity. This one says it's all perspective. Never lose your sense of wonder. This is just the alphabet and numbers. Uh, go where you feel most alive. Because when you stop and look around, this life is pretty amazing. That's very similar to the line in uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And this bottom one. Creativity is seeing what everyone else has seen and thinking what no one else has thought. That's really hard to read when you're just trying to read it off the stamp, but I thought they were cool. And I will add that to my collection. And then not at all what I thought that was going to feel like. How do I describe this fabric? Um, a little bit silky without being silk? Was that like rayon or something? I don't know. Something to that effect. That type of feel. Is there a tag in here that says what it's made of? 100% polyester. Of course it is. Wash dark colored clothes separately, made in China. But it's a little, like, really lightweight jacket. I can see through it. Um, it reminds me of a scarf. It's got a little bit of a uh, fringe at the bottom. I think they called it boho. I got the largest size. Seems to fit okay. Because I've got on a hoodie and another shirt. So, yeah, this, it's a little snug in the shoulders, but that could be because I have a hoodie on. I think it's pretty. I got it in a 5X, and I'm not sure what that is in this particular item might be a 28 might be a 26 it is a, it's not a stretchy fabric by any sense of the imagination um but it's pretty and if i think i can wear it like over maybe a tank top or a t-shirt or something and it'll be all right It doesn't have buttons or anything. No, no kind of fasteners. I just, I like this design. I think that is really pretty. So we will see. <laughs> and the last thing in the Timu haul, I have hauled before. 
um, it's actually a replacement. And I got lucky. This one it came in a dust bag. It didn't come in a dust bag the last time. I'm lucky this time because it was cheaper. <laughs> um, it's the purse that I carry every day. It's got these little tabs that unsnap. It's got two little pockets that snap. Um, it's just the exact size of my cell phone. If it was any smaller, I wouldn't be able to get my phone in there. But it, it's... And even so, I have to sometimes pull it a little more. Eh. Come on now. Don't make a liar of me. Oh, this one doesn't want to. There we go. Oh, nope. I got. I had it. I had it. There. Cell phone fits. Just barely. Um, then you've got the zipper pouch. It's got a long strap. It's got um, two little pockets here. It's got a zipper pouch in the middle. Um, it's got a zipper pouch on this side. I usually keep like pens and things in one of the pouches. I keep my little um, wallet thing in here. I keep a pouch that's got all my like ibuprofen and lip gloss and whatever in there. All right, the reason I got this, well, a couple reasons. And it's mainly to do with, it's not real leather. It's like, um, I don't know, like a vinyl kind of stuff. And first day, this piece came off. It came unbuckled and fell off. Luckily, it did it here in the house, fell off on the bed, so I was able to fix it. At one point, I had it glued with super glue, and then that came undone. And I believe my buckle is like inside my other purse then this one started coming undone because the uh hole stretched and that's not that big a deal i mean it still does its function but now i have used it so hard that the stuff is starting to peel on the handle because i usually carry it this way just because i don't have this piece on so the the front flap doesn't stay completely closed it's closed on one side but not the other so I carry it by the handle and it's managed to start wearing but I've used it since I think July every day and I'm hard on purses I really am so I figure it was time to replace it I got lucky and hit it on a day when it must have been on like a lightning deal or something so it was only $11 and change I saw it in my feed yesterday, or well, last night while I was at work, for 16 something. And the, the strap is adjustable. I mean, it, it's fairly long. But I love the purse. Um, I, I really, it's, it's my favorite thing. <laughs> or one of my favorite things. I like that this is actual metal. The studs are all metal. It's got this little snap thing that I can put across. This is what I hang my keys off of because <laughs> I keep them on a carabiner. Which I'm still looking for a new carabiner. The ones I got off Timu were little mini ones. 
and I didn't catch that when I ordered them. So I now have like 10 little mini carabiners that I don't really have any use for at the moment. I'll find something for them. But yeah, replacement purse. And I'm really happy with it. And I'm really happy that I got it at a lower price. It was almost 20 when I bought it the first time around. So I got lucky the day I reordered it. All right, let's get into the snacks. If I can cut the tape, there we go. So this is the first time I've gotten Universal Yums. Um, this was supposed to be the Ukraine box. And they're supposed to give $2 for every, from every Ukraine box that gets ordered to... I forget the name of the charity, but it's a charity that helps feed people who can't get food because of the war. Wow, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Oh, oh, lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. It's packed. We have a sheet of stickers, which is cool. Um, how can I take that box over, scoot me over a little bit. Okay, it's got this, welcome to Ukraine. It looks like it's got some facts here. Um, Kiev, called the City of Golden Domes, Kiev is known for the iconic style of its many Orthodox churches. I only know how to pronounce that one because I hear it on the news all the time. Uh, Shipola? Come here to try Ukraine's hottest chip or just look in your box. Okay, I guess we have some of those then. Kharkiv Oblast, Oblast, you have this place to think if you can't get enough of the black currant crustata in your box. So this is telling a little bit about the places where the things come from. Kolomaya, home to the Pisanka Museum, which houses 10,000 different Pisanka, which are the traditional Ukrainian Easter eggs. They're those really gorgeous ones, and I've watched videos on how they're made and I don't think I have a steady enough hand to even try. It is such fine detail and it's done with wax and dye. So you start like if you have a white egg you start with your lightest color and you make your design in that color then you dye it the next color make your design then you dye the next color and it's a long process but you got to have a steady hand, and I my hands shake too much. Uh, Odessa. The catacombs under this city are over 1,500 miles long, about the distance of 45 million Pesenka eggs. Okay, then. And Crimea, the only place in the world where the endangered Crimean rowan tree grows. Huh. So that's kind of a... Kind of on the floor. <laughs> kind of a little map, and it gives you a little bit of facts and things about the Ukraine, which is kind of nice. I like the idea that it's kind of a poster. And on the back, the Yum scoreboard. Draw the number of columns you need for the number of tasters. Then, when trying each Yum, have each taster rated as... Delicious, excellent, just well, okay, or I did not need this in my life. Huh. I don't think we're doing that because it's just me right now. And I'll just tell you if I liked it or not. Team rating. Now you've tried everything. It's time to make your voice heard. Come together as a team to decide your favorite, worst, and weirdest yum. 
Once you've reached a consensus, snap a picture of your scoreboard and tag Universal Yums on social media. Ten lucky winners will receive this month's most popular yums. Well, that's pretty neat. Uh, the Great Scavenger Hunt. We accidentally spilled a box of Yum Buddies, and now they're hiding in the Yum Shop on the back of your booklet. Help us round up the Yum Buddies and use their four letters to solve the following riddle. Need a hint? Take a peek at your sticker sheet. The oldest recognizable map in the world was found in Ukraine. It was carved into a mammoth blank. Tusk? That looks like a tusk, right? Well, we will look at the booklet. Hmm. Okay, it says, away we go to Ukraine. First timer. I don't know how to say that. Greetings. <laughs> Before you dive into snacking, we've got some sweet tips to help spice up your Universal Yum adventure. Grab a pen, turn on the tunes. Oh, neat! There's a QR code that you can scan to listen to music. Um, we put together a playlist representing Ukraine's varied music scene, from tradi traditional folk to dance pop. Scan the QR code to enhance your snacks even further. So if you want to hear the playlist, there's the QR code. It's highlighting one of the uh, candy makers. Meet Lucky the White Stork. Every spring, thousands of these majestic birds flock to Ukraine as part of their annual migration. Celebrated as the national bird, they are seen as a symbol of patriotism, family, and loyalty. And if one decides to nest on your property, you're in for a whole lot of good luck. So there's the stork. That's pretty cool. Uh, what's on the cover? You know the saying, nature finds a way? That rings true for the town of Pripyat and the surrounding Chernobyl exclusion zone. In the nearly 40 years following the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, the area has remained abandoned with visitors highly restricted. Interestingly, local wildlife has thrived without apparent harm from radiation. That's cool. Uh, researchers Pablo Biracal, Bir Biraco? I don't know how to say their name. And Sergei Gaschak are studying this phenomenon, particularly in relation to eastern tree frogs, who made their riveting debut on the cover. There's the frogs. <laughs> uh, while their research is still in the early stages, they've recently observed that the frogs found in places with higher radiation have a darker green hue than their standard counterparts. What does this mean? Only time and a lot more research will tell. Okay, here's a little thing talking about um, the Ukraine and the war and how they're dealing with it. Well, here's a bunch of trivia questions. I think we'll save that till the end. Let's get started. There we go. Let's have some snacks. I'm ready for breakfast. Or, well, I guess in my case, dinner. But it's just after nine in the morning, so it's time to have something to eat. And the first thing is homemade bread chips with adchika. Fried rye chips with adchika seasoning. I'm not sure if I'm going to like them. I generally don't care for rye. Um, many countries have a favorite condiment. The U.S. has ketchup. Italy has pesto. Mexico has salsa. And Ukraine, they have adchika. 
This mildly spicy sauce is made with carrots, tomatoes, garlic, and chili pepper and serves as an accompaniment to, well, pretty much anything. It's slathered on bread, poured into soup, drizzled atop vegetables, mixed into scrambled eggs, and most commonly paired with meat. In fact, the name Achika comes from the word for salt, which should give you an in indication of how pervasive the condiment is. See if you can taste the spices, basil, paprika, chili, garlic, bay leaves that make up the distinctive pungent flavor. Then see if you agree with this statement. New favorite condiment. I'll taste it. I like the, the packaging. Let's they got a little smooshed, but that's okay. So they're little bits of, like, little bread pieces. Let me just cut a small corner here. See if the Neko likes them. Those are just little bits. They are very, very crunchy. I like the seasoning on them. I'm just not crazy about rye. <laughs> Got a little bit of a recipe here for red bean salad with crunchy bread chips. 200 grams red beans, 100 grams pickles, 100 grams marinated mushrooms, 100 grams tomato, sour cream or mayonnaise, two, two tablespoons, salt and pepper to taste, and bread chips. Cut pickles and tomatoes, add mushrooms and beans. Mix all the ingredients with sour cream or mayonnaise, salt and pepper. Top with bread chips. I mean, it even tells you how they make it. Make the chips. They slice the bread, they fry it in oil, they sprinkle it with spice, and they pack it. Combine with beer, salad, soup. Our assortment with garlic, with salt, with tomato, with paprika. That's pretty neat. And then it's got all the nutrition stuff. Contains wheat. Made in Ukraine. Distributed by Universal Yum. Ingre <coughs> ingredients. I need a drink. Got it. I can feel the crumb in my throat. <laughs> okay. Ingredients. Rye wheat bread, which is wheat rye, rye flour, wheat flour, salt, and yeast. Sunflower oil, adjunct spice mix, tomato powder, paprika, garlic powder, hot chili pepper, basil, coriander, parsley, dill, marjoram, bay leaf and salt. They're very flavorful. I really like the spice mix on these. And actually, the rye isn't overpowering. That may be because it also has wheat in the, in the wheat flour in the mix. I don't know. They're not bad. And even though it says it has hot pepper powder in it, it's not spicy. Or like, like hot spicy. 
Got lots of flavor. Very seasoned. Okay, the next thing is golden chips wasabi. I was not expecting wasabi in a Ukraine box. Can you handle Ukraine's longest snack? You may not think of Ukrainian cuisine as spice heavy, but we're here to challenge that perception. Ukrainians can seriously handle their spice. Exhibit A, one of the most popular alcoholic drinks, Horilka, literally burning water, is often infused with red hot chili peppers. Exhibit B, this yum. These long rectangular chips might appear delicate and thin, but don't be fooled. They're speckled with an incredibly strong, ridiculously hot wasabi flavor. One flaky bite and you'll be reaching for a glass of water. Just make sure it's not burning water. <laughs> I like wasabi peas. So I hope that means I'll like these. Okay. And I, I really was not expecting something wasabi. I think of Japan when I hear the word wasabi. And I don't think we've gotten anything wasabi in any of our Japan boxes. Oh, there's a lot of it on there. Can you see how green that is? They're super thin. Super thin. They're spicy. I like these a lot. You know, it's weird. It almost reminds me of a Pringle. Speaking of Pringle, um, I got an offer from Snack Crate. I guess the next box is France to have an add-on of full five full-size snacks from France that they couldn't fit in the reg regular crate. One of the things is a full-size can of Pringles. I thought, sure, why not? <laughs> and there's some other things that sounded really good, too. So, we will see. Okay. Now for something sweet. Sponge cake with condensed milk. A slice of condensed milk cream layer cake. Sometimes sweet things can come out of really dark times. This yum is proof. After World War II, Ukraine faced food shortages that forced folks to get creative in the kitchen, especially for dessert, which is where sweetened condensed milk or skushyanka came in handy. I hope I'm saying these things at least kind of close and not saying something bad <laughs> if I mispronounce it. Um, locals use it to stick together bits of leftover baked goods, making simple no-bake cakes. Since then, sweetened condensed milk has become a staple of Ukrainian cuisine. So that's what it looks like. I'm not going to take it all the way out of the pack because I want to save some for Neko. It's got some creamy filling and it just feels like a regular sponge cake. Hmm. The cake itself isn't super sweet, but that creamy middle was very sweet. Kind of as I would expect from sweetened condensed milk. I like it. Okay, set that over here. 
here with that. <clears throat> this is crostata with black currant. Very delicious fruit and a crumbly cookie crust. In the scheme of fruits, black currant is fairly new. Native to Scandinavia and Russia, it's been cultivated to perfection in Ukraine's fertile climate over the past 500 years. Not so in the United States, where the cultivation of black currants was banned starting in 1911 due to a fungus that naturally occurs in the plants that can wreak havoc on America's trees, and therefore the lumber industry. Fortunately, tangy and richly sweet black currant crustatus are A-OK -okay for importation. I had heard that um, black currants were banned. I didn't know that that was the reason why. But somewhere I had heard about it. I want to say it was on one of the videos I watched from somebody in the UK. And that they mentioned it being banned here. And they were surprised how in the United States people don't know what black currants are. Well, if they're banned here. We're not going to know. So it looks like a little pie. Oop. And it's in this little white paper thing. So I will try to break a piece off. There we go. I don't know if the necker would like this or not. He's funny about fruits and things. So there's what it looks like. I mean, it just looks like a cookie with fruit filling. You know, I don't think it's too far off from black raspberry. I think it was Food Wars. They were doing Skittles. And they commented on how black currant was a flavor in the UK, but not here. And they mentioned the, that the black currants were banned. I think that's where I saw it. I like this. The crust part's slightly dry. But it reminds me of just regular pie crust. <laughs> that's pretty good. I like that. I think it would be nice to have just a little bit more of the black currant filling to compensate for the dryness of the crust. There it is. It's up against the side. I couldn't see it. <clears throat> this one's called Choco Shocks. Chocolatey wafer studded with cookies and cream. The more we travel the world on this snack adventure, the easier it is to notice that some yums are, well, universal. Case in point, cookies and cream. Here's Ukraine's take on it. Smooth vanilla cream flecked with cookie pieces, smeared over a wafer, and then smothered in chocolate. 
You've never had cookies and cream like this before. We haven't. Let's see what it tastes like. The picture makes it look a little bit like the um, Kinder Bueno. The way it has the little segments. Oh, that's okay. He said it broke off. That's what the overall thing looks like. And that's the creamy part. Hmm. Neko will love this. He likes cookies and cream. Okay, so here we have something called Yum Bag. And in it, looks like there's a couple different types of um, treats. Okay, so these are chewing sweets. Soft candy with a bubblegum flavor. Bubblegum candy probably isn't what you expect when you think of Ukrainian sweets. You can read more about how this yum came to be on the first page of the booklet. Well, I didn't read that. Okay. The bubblegum chews in the chocolate lemon bites in your box serve a specific purpose in Ukraine today. The candy maker... I'll just show you the name. It begins with a Z. Zaitomirsky? I think. <laughs> uh, the candy maker developed these candies in 2022 in order to lift the spirits of Ukrainian children, inspiring joy and carefree lightness through the treats. The recipe uses only ingredients that are readily available so that the candy maker can keep making them even if resources become scarce. Well, that's really nice. Soft candy with bubblegum flavor, so not gum. And then there's this one. <clears throat> I wonder if this is the choco lemon thing they were talking about. This one's called Trisitron Glazed Sweets. Chocolatey bites with creamy lemon, lemon filling. Lemons definitely aren't a part of traditional Ukrainian fare, but they are a part of Ukrainian innovation. A greenhouse network in Rozhny, a village near Kiev, uses specialized thermo greenhouses to produce everything from white pomegranates, mini bananas, and you see where we're going with this? Lemons. The growing process isn't easy with the entire plantation submerged in the ground and divided into two unique climate zones, but it does allow for further experimentation with food. Today it's lemon chocolate, but perhaps one day we'll see white pomegranate chips in the Ukraine box. Okay. So let me put the rest of the chewing sweets in here. And there's something else that I will have to find their description. Because might as well do everything that's in this little pouch all at once. I like that they gave us like four of each thing. Minky Binky. That looks like strawberry, orange, and grape. Let's see if we can find out what Minky Binky is. Uh, 
There we go. Minky Binky. Apricot, strawberry, blueberry, or orange caramel toffees. Minky Binky. A cartoon monkey. Toffee filled with fruit juice. This yum's a little cookie. The two factories that make this yum in the cities of Venezia and Kremenchuk, Kremenchuk are responsible for producing 60% of all caramels in Ukraine. So they started monkeying around with a bit of their basic product lineup, combined fruit and toffee, and voila, here we are with the latest and greatest of Ukrainian caramel. Okay, that looks like an orange, so I think this one's probably an orange one. <clears throat> so, Minky Binky. And it just looks like a glob of caramel. Probably should have picked a strawberry one. So that you could see the colors different. But there is kind of an orange colored filling in the middle. It's a nice caramel, and I like that little hint of orange in there. That's cool. I like that. My hands are a little achy today. <laughs> I like that. It's really good caramel. Really good caramel. I love caramel. I'm curious about the lemon chocolate. Trisitron. I wonder if it's supposed to be like Trisitron. So it looks like a chunk of chocolate. And it's got goo coming out of it. It's all over me now. So now you can see the lemon filling. It's a very pale yellow. Hmm. It's not a combination I would have thought to put together. But it's actually pretty good. Yeah, I never would have thought, let's put lemon and chocolate together. It seems like it would be opposite ends of the spectrum, but it's actually pretty good. Okay, and this one's the Chewing Sweets. Soft candy with bubblegum flavor. If I can get it open. Feels um, kind of like saltwater taffy. And again, it's a very pale yellow. I think it's kind of a bubblegum flavor, but it tastes like something else. I'm trying to figure, trying to place the taste. It's very sweet. Very sweet.
it's almost as sweet as like a, a marshmallow and marshmallows for me are right at the too sweet line you know it's okay that's not my favorite i like the other things better but then i'm not a kid so <laughs> But I, that doesn't really taste like bubble gum to me. I'm trying to figure out what it is that tastes different. Okay. So this thing is called Bonnie Fruit Summer Mix. And it says fruit jellies with pear, apricot, and more. With incredibly harsh winters, Ukrainians had to turn pro at preserving. Over the summer, berries were traditionally boiled into a sweet jam known as varenye. Ver varenye. Apricots and peaches were dried and later mixed with hot sugar water for the dessert beverage compot, compote. And the really experimental preserves focused on pickling watermelon. I've heard of doing that. I've heard of watermelon pickle before. These extra sweet, soft jelly candies made with real fruit juice are the modern form of preservation, allowing Ukrainians to enjoy summertime faves all year long. And here's a little tray. And there's different colored, they kind of look like gumdrops. There's a green, there's like a white color, there's pink, there's red. Is this watermelon? Because it's kind of shaped like a slice of watermelon. That one's kind of shaped like a pear. Is that watermelon? I think that might be a strawberry. Some kind of berry. I think that might be an apricot. Maybe. I don't know if that's a lime or an apple. <laughs> Probably an apple because there's an apple on the picture. A little tartness hit at the end. I think that's supposed to be apple. They're very soft. They're like a very soft gumdrop type. I like these. It says they're 25% juice. Okay, next thing. <clears throat> These look like something I'll like. Delicia rolls with baked milk flavor. Ukraine's eight hour milk. Preservation pros don't just stop at fruit. Stalwart Ukrainians also had to solve dairy's annoying tendency to spoil fast. Their solution, baked milk, a delicacy and common breakfast drink. Milk is slowly heated for eight hours, creating a chemical reaction in the naturally occurring amino acids and sugars 
that turned dairy into a creamy, caramely sensation. These crispy wafer rolls are filled to the brim with that sweet, milky flavor that's nostalgic to Ukrainians and delicious. I'm curious. These look like the um, pyroline that you can get like in, in a can. I love those things. Let's see, what does it look like? actually in the pack oh this one's broken off that's okay so they're just a round wafer and they've got filling that's a unique flavor I don't know how to describe it. I like it. Although I wouldn't say it tastes creamy. Or I wouldn't say creamy texture. It's almost powdery in texture. How do I describe this flavor? It's different. I like it a lot. Um, okay, this one. Nice big candy bar. Roshan bubble caramel chocolate. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I get that tickle and then I end up packing. Okay, let's try this again. Roshan bubble caramel chocolate. An aerated caramel and white chocolate bar. One of the world's largest confectionaries and the biggest in Ukraine, Roshan produces over 450,000 tons of treats every year. Sounds like an awful lot. From chocolates to caramels to jellies to biscuits to cakes, the Willy Wonka-esque mastermind behind it all? Ukraine's former president, Petro Poroshenko. Huh. In 1996, long before his presidency began in 2014 and ended in 2019, Poroshenko started Roshan, quickly earning the nickname Chocolate King. Here you'll taste one of the, his company's greatest innovations, white chocolate aerated to make tiny bubbles, creating the ultimate chocolate melting experience for your mouth. I know the UK has, I think it's called the Aero Bar, which is the same aerated style chocolate. Break off a piece here. Okay, it's white chocolate. I don't know if you'll be able to see all the little bubbles in there. It's super sweet. But white chocolate has a tendency to be very sweet. It does melt really nicely. I 
And there's a little hint of a caramely flavor. And I think it's more um, white chocolate than anything. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. I think this is white chocolate thing is something that I would have to eat in small bits. That little piece that I just had was almost too much. I think two little squares at a time, maybe. Four squares is too much. <laughs> but I don't mind white chocolate but it has to be small amounts because it's so sweet. Okay. This sounds really good to me. Polis Big Bar. 11 layer dark chocolate and almond wafer. Not so long ago, almonds were considered an extraordinary nut in Ukraine, imported exclusively through the port city of Odessa from the Mediterranean. Today, Odessa and the surrounding region are prolific producers of almonds themselves. With production taking place at home, the nut became much more integrated in Ukrainian food. Case in point, this 11-layer wafer with grated almond filling. I like chocolate and almond. It's a good combination. It's a classic. And as I state in every box that we get, I love wafers. <laughs> I think Neko's going to be excited when we get to the chips. Okay. Oh, this is crumbly. Very crumbly. I'm trying to get out of the pack without getting crumbs everywhere. That's what it looks like. <laughs> mm. I don't know if you can tell the layers, but there are lots of layers in there. I like it. Piece go up my sleeve. <laughs> Slide that back down in there. I don't know if Neko will like that because there is little bits of nut in it. It's not that he can't have nuts, it's that he doesn't have a lot of teeth, so he has trouble eating nuts. Vas Taris Soda, an ancient malt beverage, still a national fave. This unique drink, made from fermented barley and rye, is as old as Ukraine itself. The earliest recorded mention of Vas was all the way back in 996 AD, but a text called the Primary Chronicle, which described the baptism of Vladimir the Great. Vas was a big part of the celebratory feast. This non-alcoholic beverage is still drunk today. No special occasion required. A favor, the flavor is lightly sweet, bready, and faintly reminiscent of a very light beer. Take a swig and let's party like it's 996. Not opening it because I don't drink sodas. And I don't like beer. So if it tastes like beer, <laughs> I'll skip it. But we will set it aside and 
I'm hoping my brother will be down soon. And maybe I can get him to try it. And of course, the phone has to ring while I'm recording. I don't know if I can reach the phone from here. Well, it must have been a telemarketer because they didn't talk. Won't worry about the phone then. Okay, we have friendly cookies. Strawberry shaped cookies with sesame seeds. In Ukraine, the most unique use of strawberries has to be in their iconic strawberry dumplings. Zemlion. Zemlion. Zemlionika Vareniki. I know I butchered that one all the heck. <laughs> A tender dough is filled with sweet strawberry filling and topped with a dollop of sour cream. These adorable cookies pay homage to the iconic dessert with that same sweet filling and the world's most appropriately placed sesame seeds. I wish they would put a pronunciation thing next to so we could at least have a fighting chance. I'm going to guess that the bulk of their customers are probably in the United States and probably don't speak Ukraine. So they look like little strawberries. I think the sesame seeds are cute. They should have used black sesame seeds. Then it really would have looked like a strawberry. But this is cute. The cookie is like a shortbread, and it's got a good strawberry flavor. I think just a touch more of a strawberry would have been a little better, but not bad. They're enjoyable cookies. Kids would love them, I'm sure. I like them. So here's the next thing. Crustata potata bacon flavored potato snacks. A snack inspired by the great fat salo. These aren't just any old bacon snacks. They're salo snacks. Salo is Ukraine's beloved pork fat cured in salt and garlic then eaten raw. I don't think... Eating raw fat sounds appetizing or healthy. <laughs> or it's sweetened and made into a pie. Or stewed with cabbage and made into pork rolls. Or carved into a soccer ball weighing 800 pounds. An actual world record. Salo is even an aspiration. That feeling when no one can mess with you because you know you have good life and can afford to buy Salo. I don't know. Eating raw pork fat just doesn't sound like a good idea. Some would say eating cooked pork fat's not a good idea either, but I love bacon. So this is what they look like. They're very light and airy looking. Kind of like... Um, Oh, there's another snack that's similar. Not quite a bugle. Almost like a rice cake, really. Pop chips, maybe? Oh, they're salty. Very, very salty. 
And here's one that's almost flat, but it's got like ribbed edges. And this one's got a lot of the flavoring on it. You can see how orange it is. <laughs> I kind of like those. We had a similar chip from, I don't know, some one of the snack crates. And I don't remember which country it was from. I like the texture. I like how light they are. They're very, or very <coughs> salty. Javier Halva Sunflower. Crumbly treat made from Ukrainian sunflower seeds. Don't let the beige color fool you. This is one tasty candy. The reason for the off-putting hue? Sunflower seeds. Ukraine produces over 40% of the world's supply of both sunflower meal and sunflower oil. And the local love of, for sunflowers goes beyond just food. Ukraine's national flower represents peace and resilience. And the symbol is regularly incorporated into clothing designs. With them cropping up in every facet of Ukrainian life, sunflowers are a symbol of national pride. In this case, delicious, crumbly, nutty pride. <clears throat> I don't mind sunflower seeds. So let's see what this is like. This is going to sound weird, but it tastes like peanut butter. I know they make, like, was it called sun butter or something? Where they use sunflower seeds and make a peanut butter alternative. It tastes a lot like peanut butter. I think we're almost to the end. Roshan Milk Chocolate. Milk chocolate bursting with caramely creme brulee. Ooh. This is Roshan's most iconic chocolate bar, enjoyed by Ukrainians, Ukrainians for over 15 years. While the filling's flavor is inspired by the famous French dessert, the gooey caramel cream filling, otherwise known as an oozy mess, is its own sort of tradition. Oozy mess. You gotta love that that is a description. That sunflower one, almost like a powdery texture that, that when you first bite into it and as you eat it, it becomes more like peanut butter. So it's kind of like powdered peanut butter. I wasn't expecting it to taste quite like that. Can I open this without tearing up the label? Mm -hmm. oh, 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 oh. So there's five chunks, but the middle chunk is kind of broken, so we'll just go with this. Did you see all that caramel hanging off there? <laughs> Oozy mess indeed. And I just dropped it in my keyboard. That's not so good. I'll have to clean that before it gets stuck in there. It's good.
I saw you. Have a mouse in here. Gotta try to steal my snacks. No mouse, you can't have them. Try to fold that piece back up. Oh, okay. I like that. That's good. Okay, so the last thing is red borscht soup, Ukraine's vibrant national dish. When you make this iconic Ukrainian soup, make sure you have the whole family with you because this isn't just a quick lunch. It's a symbol of unity. A staple for centuries, borscht is a symbol of strong familiar, familial ties. Just like how family members tend to rub off on each other, as each ingredient simmers together in the pot, they all slowly blend together to become one distinct flavor. And what is that flavor? A delightfully earthy, mildly sweet, and lightly garlicky soup that will put you right at home in Babushka's or Grandma's kitchen. I am not making this right now. <coughs> it takes a process. Um... You dissolve this in three cups of boiling water and let it cook. And I know it's made out of beets. It's got beets on the, the front here. I've never tried it before. Serving size is one cup. 35 calories per serving. Sugar, salt, red beetroot, uh, maltodextrin, modified starch, vegetable fat, flavor enhancer, MSG, hydrolyzed corn protein, acidity regulator, citric acid, spices, and garlic. May contain gluten, mustard, celery, milk. I am anxious to try it because I've never had it before. I think it'll be an interesting experience. <clears throat> but that does it for this box. I am quite happy with that. I think it was a good experience. Good variety. Um, I think... Let's see, favorites of the cookie and pastry type thing. I'm kind of thinking I liked the crostata with the black currant. Um, chip wise, um, I'm between the wasabi things that we had at the beginning and the bacon chips. Although, quite honestly, those bread chips were pretty good. Even though I'm not a fan of rye, I'll, I'll end up eating those because they were actually pretty good. I love the seasoning on them. Um, the candies. Um, mm, the choc the chocolatey ones. I think the Polis Big Bar, the, the wafers with the almonds, I think maybe that one, but that last one with the caramel in it was really good. 
it's between those two. And of the other types, um, the Minky Binky was really good, and the Bonnie Fruit Summer Mix was really good. And the the chocolate and lemon was a surprisingly good combination. I never would have thought to put those flavors together. So I am very happy with what we got. There's only one thing that I was kind of eh about, and even that's not bad. So, oh, it's got a recipe for chicken plov. Chicken, onion, carrot, garlic, rice, chicken stock, and bay leaves, salt and pepper. Hmm, might have to try that. Um, I do think this is nice. It gives you like a little thing, a note for adults. We're going to talk about the invasion of the Ukraine in this section. So that's pretty interesting. So this is telling us how we got our snacks. So this box was originally planned for uh, last January. And the development actually began a year before that in January of 2022. But then after the invasion, they had to put things on hold. Um, then they finally got word from some of their suppliers that they were ready to start shipping again. So then they figured out, had to figure out what products they could get and then how to get it out of the Ukraine. <laughs> um, it says typically they would ship all Ukrainian snacks out of the port of Odessa. But currently, the port is heavily restricted, so they had to take the containers through Romania. It took 15 days to cross the border. Some truck drivers were queued up waiting to cross, sleeping in their trucks for days. Then they finally got them on the boats, got them across to the United States, and here we are eating. But yeah, because of the invasion i mean here we are 2024 finally getting our box and we've got all the nutrition information i guessed right as to what the answer of the um trivia question was it's tusk Did you enjoy your trip to the Ukraine this month? Yes, I did very much. I really enjoyed this box. And I think it's neat, the extra thingies that are in here. The stickers are fun. And this, if we would have both been down here, we could have done the scorecard, but there's really no point in doing it if it's just me. Um, although I might go ahead and fill it out just so I can send them the thing to be entered in that drawing I don't know we'll see but yeah um I am definitely interested in maybe getting another one and I would kind of like next time maybe to hold whichever box gets here first either universal yums or snack crate and then do a side-by-side -side comparison but that'll probably be like a three-hour video <laughs> and we'll probably be like so stuffed by the end that we won't want anything else. But yeah, I and I think doing this as almost a poster is really cool too. So yeah, I really every snack box we've ever gotten, I have liked different aspects of it. And I think this is a, a well put together crate. And I am absolutely interested in getting another one so we can have, you know, more experience to draw from. Um I've got, I think, five more snack crates to go before our year is up, and then I have to make a decision if I'm going to continue or not. Um, because right now the rate I'm getting on it is because I said I'd do a whole year, and I don't want to have to, you know, <laughs> be like, sorry, you don't want it anymore, and and have to pay a higher rate. Um.
but I like Snap Creek too. I like them both. So that's going to be a hard choice to make. But I, I am absolutely enjoying the different crates. And this one I think was fun. I like the way it was set up. And I think there was a good variety of stuff. Um, maybe could have used a, another savory. Personally, I would like to take the drink out and have another snack. Just because it's a soda. I, and since we don't drink sodas, I've got cans of stuff accumulating that you know we're not drinking and i'm i don't know i could put them like in the blessing box or something but people will be like what's this and i don't before when we were still working with whis i gathered up a whole bunch of the japanese drinks that we didn't have that we wouldn't drink because they were carbonated and gave them to couple of the people to try and they loved them they thought it was fantastic to get to try something different but you know Neko and I neither of us drink carbonation so me because it killed my gallbladder and I ended up having to have gallbladder surgery but I was getting so violently ill every time I drink carbonation and I finally figured out that's what was triggering my gallbladder attacks so I cut it out I haven't really drank soda for let's see he's 24 now probably probably 24 years now um I spent my first Mother's Day sicker than a dog I was in bed all day because we had had we had gone to a friend's house and I drank too much soda and I was so sick I couldn't eat or drink anything for 24 hours because of it and when I figured out what the trigger was then I just cut it out and ended up 11 years later getting my gallbladder taken out because it started being a problem again and I was trying to teach a couple English classes for university and um, I couldn't lift my arms right on the board <laughs> and it's kind of hard to you know explain some things without being able to to write the concept down and uh, yeah that was an adventure can't and i was having trouble getting in and out of my car because i had a minivan at the time and i couldn't reach up to grab onto the thing to pull myself into the car <laughs> yeah it was it was bad it was bothering me so much that I actually stopped at the urgent care on my way home. And luckily my doctor was available and she had this little girl training with her. She was so young and I was explaining my symptoms and this, she was a, an intern, but she looked like a little kid. <laughs> and I was explaining my, my symptoms and she was looking it up on WebMD and I'm thinking, I could have done that. I did do that. I can tell you what the problem is. And she's like, well, it could be this or it could be that or it could be your gallbladder. I said, bingo, you got it. This is my gallbladder. And she just looked at me and I'm like, I've been through this before. And I looked it up on WebMD like you're doing. And it was like a checklist. I This, 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 this. Yeah, that's what it is. And they said, well, we'll send you out for an ultrasound. And they did. And it came back that I had stones and gunk. So they sent me to the surgeon. <laughs> well, he told, he's the one that told me it was stones and gunk. I said, is that a technical term? He says, yes, it is. <laughs> gunk. A friend of mine around the same time was also going through gallbladder stuff. And they told her sludge. <laughs> I said, man, I got gunk and you got sludge. But, uh, yeah, that was um, 2010. So my gallbladder was, has been gone for 13 plus years. Because it was December of 2010 that it got taken out. Same weekend my niece was born. <laughs> and uh, yeah. But they're like, when do you want to schedule your surgery? And I'm like, it has to be after the 8th. And they're like, Okay, why? And it's because that's the day fi the final grades are due. I have to 
have to submit my grades. They're like, okay. I said, I can make it a couple more days. And then they got me in and took that sick old thing out. And the doctor, the surgeon was like, it was much sicker than I thought it was going to be. I said, yeah, that's real encouraging. <laughs> but, you know, we're doing okay now, so. But because all this happened when Mecca was just a baby, um, I didn't let him have pop growing up. And he's tried it a couple times, and he's like, it just tastes bad. It tastes funny. And I was like, well, that's the carbonation. Because I've tasted it a couple times since. And I'm like, how did I ever drink this stuff? <laughs> it was awful. So once you're used to not having it, trying it again is, is just ugh, not pleasant. But anyway, I think we're going to end it here. We're at almost an hour and a half. So considering it's both a Timu haul and a snack box. And I yak way too much. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed it. And I will see. I don't know if there's any like referral codes or anything. I'll look and see. But I'll, I'll at least put the link. It's universalyums.com. But I'll put that link down in the description box in case you're interested. I don't, like I said, I don't know if there's any like referral link or anything. Um, the ones for boxu and japan crate i have to enter an email address and they send it to whoever they didn't have a link just a specific link with a code for my name to connect it to my account so anyway you, you would think if they wanted you to do referrals that they would give you a referral link um so we're going to leave it at that Remember to do all the YouTube things, comment, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell icon to be notified of future uploads should the YouTube gods deem it worthy. And we will see you in the next video, whatever it may be. I know there's a couple more Timu things coming and they're all just little hauls because <clears throat> they'll be like, oh, here's this offer for something for a penny. Okay. <laughs> or here's this thing that's really, really great deal. Okay. And so, um, like this haul, I needed to replace my purse. And so I, I searched it out and the, um, sweater thingy was marked down and I thought, well, I'll go ahead and get it. And I'd been looking at that set of stamps for quite some time and they were on some sort of deal as well. So... I was like, okay, I'll just get the, get these things and move on. So, anyway, I've already done the spiel, so we will see you in the next one. Likely Timu could be Boxu, um, because that's already been um, renewed, and I believe I got a thing saying it was shipped, so it may be coming in the next week or so. Um. I've got two different Taste of Home things coming. I've got Japan Crate should be renewing today. So that'll be coming. Snack Crate said that it's in transit. When I was buying the add-on, it said it had been shipped. So um, <laughs> I got all kinds of stuff coming. So just... Um, so, okay, we will uh, end this here, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.